Netflix is having a tough year. Stock is down, subscribers are fleeing, and some people are saying that this might be the end of the streaming giant. But that might not be entirely true. Today we're going to talk about what's going on, how Netflix got to this point, what they're trying to do to fix it, and is it going to work, and most importantly, what's your role to play in all of this? Netflix is not doing well, and what makes the whole situation so much more astounding is that just a year ago they were doing incredibly well. The government's response to the virus sent people home, they didn't have anything else to do, so they got streaming subscriptions, Netflix being the most popular among them. They were seeing tons of new subscribers making lots of money. As a matter of fact, in November of 2021, their stock hit an all-time high of $700 a share. Now, just six months later, in May of 2022, the stock has spent the entire month hovering around $180 a share. That's a 75% drop for a huge tech company in just six months. Their most recent earnings call revealed they were anticipating almost 2 million new subscribers in the first quarter of this year. But unfortunately, they actually lost 200,000 subscribers. That's a big deal, not just because of the big difference in the numbers, but because that's the first time that they've lost subscribers in over a decade. That's a lot of damage. Moreover, it was revealed last week that they have begun laying off in response to their lowered stock price and their drop in subscribers. So far, 150 employees have been laid off, mostly in the US. They've also revealed that they cut production on a lot of big shows. The earnings call also revealed that they anticipate further losses in the next quarter or two, so investors are running for the hills. Now, is this a referendum on woke content like so many conservatives are saying? Not really. The real culprits in this case are the company mishandling their assets, misreading their audience, and just being downright lazy with the way that they're running their business and making their content. Now, before we go on, I think it's very important that we discuss what the term woke means when I'm using it, because woke is starting to get to the right as the term racist is to the left. When I'm using the term woke, what I really mean is performance diversity. It just means that the company is doing things in the name of diversity, trying to represent certain groups, not because it really believes in those groups, but because it wants to pat itself on the back by checking as many boxes as possible. It's all about good PR and it has nothing to do with goodwill whatsoever. It's much more complicated with Netflix than just get woke, go broke. What Netflix is in the middle of is kind of a perfect storm of economic conditions and lazy programming. They recently raised their price to $20. Now, $20 is not that much and before it was $18. So it was only a $2 bump, but there's something psychological about that $20 number. That people are having to make budgetary cuts because inflation is causing everything to be more expensive. They're looking at this entertainment company that just isn't as entertaining anymore because their programming has been more about this messaging and this political ideology and less about just being good television. Something about that $20 mark really caused people to sit up and pay attention and go, oh, I am paying this much and I don't like the programming and I have to make some budgetary cuts. So Netflix, you gotta go. Uh, uh, you're boring. But more than just being lazy and having economic pressures, I really think that Netflix dropped the ball on reading their audience. I think they're making a big mistake that a lot of companies are making, especially when it comes to performance diversity. They're marketing to people that are actually not customers of theirs. They see themselves as popular on social media. There's a lot of hashtags supporting them and their shows. Whenever they make a show, they cast a diverse cast of people or they've ticked a bunch of boxes, right? And people like talk about it. It's actually really ironic. Netflix is making these shows and they're casting people with the sole intention of ticking boxes so that they look good. It's all good PR. But what they don't understand is the people talking about them, the journalists writing the headlines about them, the hashtags about them, all this support that they think they're getting, those are just people who want to be seen praising Netflix, who just wants to be seen ticking those boxes. It's like this weird woke-ception. They made the mistake of not realizing that online is not real. Twitter's not real, TikTok's not real. All of that popularity did not transfer into subscribers. It didn't translate into actual dollars in their pocket. That's not how any of this works. Now, what's interesting is that a lot of these companies should have learned from the 2016 election of Donald Trump. During that election, everybody thought that Hillary Clinton was a shoe in She was everywhere, had an excellent social media campaign. Donald Trump, of course, was popular on Twitter, but not because people were supporting him on Twitter, just because his tweets were so enraging and people liked to talk about him. But talk about supporting him was not very loud online. Obviously, we all know now that come election night, those conservatives made their voices heard at the ballot box, even if they weren't talking as loudly on social media. If you want to watch some of the best television you've ever seen, like television that Netflix cannot possibly match, go and watch some of the news broadcasts from that night. It's incredible. Watching Gail King look like she's going to cry. Watching Van Jones. I'm hearing about a nightmare. They're afraid of how do I explain this to my children? This was a white lash. Ah! 
uh, we were watching, I think CNBC, and they were like begging Chuck Todd, like touch the touch the board, touch the counties, tell us what's going on. Like they were so confused. They were just looking back and forth at each other. Like what does anybody know what's going on at all? But the number one thing I think that is plaguing Netflix right now is that they're just lazy and they're making lazy shows and those lazy shows are not entertaining. And when people are not entertained by an entertainment company, they're gonna cancel. Yeah, basic. It's very clear that the people that are greenlighting the shows at Netflix just think that social politics is inherently interesting. And they're basing their shows around that message and not around the characters and the story. And people see right through that stuff. It just makes for bad television. As a matter of fact, Netflix is kind of reminding me of clickbait before we had a term for clickbait. Do you remember when a lot of ads online were like, she's got a rusty car bumper, but she's got a packet of Kool-Aid. What happens next will shock you. And then we we coined the term clickbait for crap like that. And this stuff worked for a while, right? It was interesting, it was in your face, it was flashy. Pop-up ads also used to work for a while. The advertising industry shows us that once something works, a bunch of people are gonna jump on board until the market is oversaturated and the consumers catch on and then they don't, they don't do that anymore. Do you click on those goofy clickbait ads anymore? No. You're conditioned to realize that those are garbage and they don't earn your attention anymore. Netflix is basically on the tail end of that learning curve. Their shows were a lot like clickbait marketing. I'll give you a good example of this. Netflix has a teenage vampire drama coming out soon called First Kill. And here's a synopsis. When it's time for teenage vampire Juliet to make her first kill so she can take her place among a powerful vampire family, she sets her sights on a new girl in town named Calliope. But much to Juliet's surprise, Calliope is a vampire hunter from a family of celebrated slayers. Both find that the other won't be so easy to kill and unfortunately, way too easy to fall for. I've heard it both ways. So, okay, we have basically Romeo and Juliet with vampires, but they're also lesbians. They're not learning that this kind of shock and awe advertising and story writing is just not working. Juliet is a vampire that needs to make her first kill. Calliope is a vampire hunter and they're lesbians. What happens next will shock you. This is the kind of garbage show that they are making. It's just lazy. It's not even about the fact that, you know, they think that the lesbian aspect is shocking. It's just like they're throwing crap on a wall that they thought was popular at one point. Let's tell a Romeo and Juliet story. Oh, but let's make it vampires. Vamp the kids love vampires, right? And let's also make them gay because everybody needs to be gay. That's the box that we need to tick with this show. This is the kind of lazy crap they're putting out and they're wondering why they're bleeding subscribers. Who wants to watch some crap like that? That show is going to be garbage. And it's not because it's woke, it's just because it's garbage. It also has to do with the fact that they don't want to really invest in the audience and invest in the shows. Netflix has had this kind of weird theory where they sh they'll just make anything, right? It's kind of been a, a, it's kind of been an open thing that Netflix will green light pretty much anything for a season or two. If it doesn't just go crazy, if it doesn't go viral, then they cancel it. The problem with that is that the audience, again, is starting to catch up. People don't want to get invested in a new Netflix original because they know that it's only going to have one or two seasons. My wife was a really big fan of this show, Travelers. It was like a time travel type thing. They gave it two seasons, then they pulled the plug. And they always act like there's going to be a third season. They think they want one, but then when the audience numbers aren't massive, they just kill it. So now people are realizing, well, I don't want to start one of those shows. I don't want to get invested because they're probably just gonna pull the plug when it doesn't become super viral famous. The problem is it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because now the shows don't get viewers so they get pulled that much faster. Now all of their content is half-baked. None of it really has a lot of effort put into it. Netflix is not really trying to engage with the audience. They're just trying to get those quick hits those quick squid games, those quick tiger kings that everybody's gonna talk about and it's gonna get them new subscribers. But meanwhile, they're neglecting their actual subscriber base and now those people are leaving. All right, so things are pretty bleak for Netflix right now, right? Everybody's kicking them while they're down. Everybody's beating up on them. Conservatives are cheering in the streets because the woke. this is a referendum on woke content, right? But Netflix is not really doing that badly. Yes, their stock price is down a little bit, but it was massively overvalued at $700. Yes, they laid off 150 employees last week, but they still have 11,000 employees. So less than 2% of their entire workforce got laid off. Yes, 
they lost 200,000 subscribers, but their subscriber count is still over 220 million. That's a 0.1% loss to their subscriber base. All right, so Netflix does see that they need to change. They are trying to remain agile. They're not just doing the same thing over and over again. Yes, they are making the same Ryan Reynolds movie over and over again, but they do have some original ideas. So Netflix is trying to get into live streaming. Now, what that's going to look like for them is going to be like uh, game shows. They're going to have live game shows where you will get to be able to participate. Like you can vote back and forth for who's going to win or uh, maybe what kind of consequences somebody's going to face in a game show, something like that. Their other thing they want to get into is going to be live reality show wrap ups. So at the end of a season of Real Housewives of wherever they're shooting, they're going to have all of these four desperate women get in one room and they'll fight with each other live. And that's going to be entertaining for some people. They're also trying to get into the gaming space. Um, I think this is a really, really bad move and they need to quit wasting money in this arena. Uh, right now, there are so many game subscription services. Obviously, the big ones like Xbox Game Pass, PlayStation, the Google Play Store, Apple Arcade, Steam. You know what? I can't sum it up better than a gaming YouTube channel called Skill Up. And he said, I'm in video games all day, every day. It's my job to talk about them and know about them. And I can't name for you a single title on Netflix's game catalog. And that should tell you everything you need to know. I think it's a huge waste of money and it's not gonna draw on any subscribers. All right, conservatives, here's your time to shine. Number one thing Netflix needs to do, stop focusing on the message. They need to stop with the performance diversity. You need to stop ticking the boxes just for show. Stop palette swapping your characters. Stop gender swapping your characters. Stop making everybody gay, binary. You know, it's kind of funny that there's like, you could make a drinking game out of Netflix shows every time they forcibly, insincerely check boxes. But I wouldn't recommend that because you might die of alcohol poisoning. Good idea that they have is cutting out some of these super divisive shows. On the heels of the layoff announcement of the 150 people, they also announced that they were cutting some shows that people were very happy to see go. The most recognizable is going to be anti-racist baby. And apparently it was going to be about a baby that taught other babies to be anti-racist. And I'm sure that it was going to be the most horrific television you've ever seen in your life. They're also cutting something called Stamped, which again is a show aimed at adolescents and it teaches them about the racist histories of America and why America America is so terrible and racist. You know, on a side note, it's really weird how a lot of these critical race theory people want to tell us how horrible and racist America is. And it does have a lot of bad history. Don't let anybody tell you that America has clean hands because they don't. What's interesting to me, though, is that these people will tell you how horrible America is and the government is fundamentally racist. And these are generally the same types of people that want huge government. And I don't understand how those two viewpoints fit together. They also canceled cartoon for the Wings of Fire book series. Uh, it's a kid series about dragons. I think I am a little glad that one got canceled though, because the book is not about racism, but I have absolutely no doubt that Netflix would have turned it into a raging message fest where they beat you over the head with messages that really don't appear in the books. Basically, Netflix took a look at some of its shows and the ones that were gonna be the most divisive they decided to just quit or not produce at all. And I think that's a good move. Another big fake conservative win, conservative, like all over YouTube, I was seeing nothing but headlines about how Netflix is sending a message to woke culture because they sent a memo out to their employees saying, if you don't like working on the shows we tell you to, then you could just leave. And they're telling those wokists to shut up and do their job. Except that the only show they ever reference is the Dave Chappelle comedy show where he made some comments about trans people and everybody lost their entire mind. That's the only show that Netflix has made that is really upset leftists. Everything else in their catalog is leftist progressive woke content. So when they sent a message out to their employees saying, look, you got to work on what you're told and if you don't like it, well, that's too bad. Yes, that did include this Chappelle show. Yeah, that probably will include a Bill Burr special where he'll say something uh, offensive to leftist people but it also involves cartoons, kids' cartoons, where a bunch of the characters are gay, which always happens in season two for some strange and possibly nefarious reason, Netflix. Uh, it also involves working on shows like Cuties that they put out and apparently didn't see any kind of problem with. So everybody was 
screaming from the rooftops about how this memo was this amazing win for the culture war. And I think they're deluding themselves. And I don't think that that signals any kind of cultural change at Netflix whatsoever. I think it was a small little token that they threw out and people ate it up. Another big thing that I think Netflix needs to take into account, I don't see any evidence they're doing this yet. A lot of other streaming services release their content like two or three shows up front to get you interested and then they release the shows weekly. Now, a lot of people don't like this because they think that streaming services should not be emulating cable and they just want all their shows at once. The other streaming services keep you going. They drip feed you the content one day a week. So at the very least, you're probably gonna have to sign up for one or two months of this service. I think they really need to emulate their competitors and start drip feeding the content and not just dumping it out for people to binge. They also need to stop with this shotgun approach to making their shows. This idea that they'll just green light anything give anything a chance because, hey, you never know where a diamond in the rough is hiding and once we find it, we'll promote the crap out of it and hopefully get some su subscribers. But then everything else we just cancel after a season or two. That business practice has got to stop. They need to be a little bit more discerning with their productions. And yes, maybe that means that Tiger King wouldn't have gotten made. And that would be sad because I did watch that and it was wildly entertaining. But if they're more discerning, and they take the time to promote the stuff that does make it, I think that they'll actually invest more in those shows and the consumer is gonna respond. They'll know that Netflix is committing to the shows and so they also wanna commit. Again, right now, people don't wanna to commit to a show in its first season or two because they don't know if Netflix is gonna support it and they don't wanna get attached only to have the rug pulled out from them later. The last thing that they're doing, and I think this is a really good idea, is they are investing in like full feature length movies. But again, they need to be a little bit discerning. Don't just make anything. And they also don't need to be shooting to make avatar killing blockbusters. They just need to make movies that are good. Not amazing, not crap, just good. That's the sweet spot that Netflix needs to be aiming for. Again, the number one thing that Netflix needs to understand is that they are a subscription service. Every subscription service, the business model that works is to get you hooked and then make you forget that you're paying them. Netflix needs to bring the price back down so people don't see this massive $20 charge. Like 12 to $15 is the sweet spot for these subscription services. They need to try to make less divisive content and stay out of the news. Basically, their number one goal right now should be to make okay to good stuff and fade into the background so they don't lose any more subscribers. They need to focus less on grabbing every new subscriber and just maintain for a while until the heat falls off. So that brings us to the end here where we talk about what you should be doing with this information because really this is the most important part for you. You can't control what Netflix does. You can't control what other viewers do. You can only control you. The number one thing you need to be doing is being aware of how you're spending your time. I think if anything, the big virus response has taught us to be more intentional with our time and our money. Inflation is really helping out with that too. People are looking at their budgets and they're realizing some of these small recurring charges that they're getting that used to fade into the background, but now they're seeing them for the first time in what may be years and they're canceling them. And I think it's a really good thing. If nothing else good has come from the virus, it is that people are being a lot more intentional with their time and their money. And the Netflix story ought to be telling you to be intentional with your time and your money as well. We recently canceled Netflix for a lot of reasons. I will admit that some of the woke content was a factor. I didn't like the fact that they were sneaking in like gay characters into my children's television shows, my cartoons in the second season that felt a little nefarious like they were trying to sneak it in under my nose, but also because we looked at a lot of our streaming services and we started taking notes as to which ones we went to the most. We asked the kids, hey, what have you been watching lately? And nobody was watching anything on Netflix. So we just realized like, we're not even using this service. So take a look at what you're doing with your time. It's not just Netflix. Like take a look at the stuff that you have recurring bills for, or take a look at the habits Let's get beyond just Netflix or what you watch. Like, take a look at the things you do every single day and are they serving you? Are you actually enjoying them? And if not, it's time to cut this stuff. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy this content, please give it a thumbs up. I'm a small channel and it helps immensely with the algorithm. If you think that Netflix is doomed or you think they're gonna come back to life, let me know in the comments. Give me your ideas about what they're doing and what you think is gonna work and what isn't gonna work. If you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.